All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex Mason. Welcome to Stock Stories. I am your stock storyteller. This is the show where we decode the business behind the stock. And today we're going to be talking about Macy's, ticker symbol M. Uh, and we're going to be talking a little bit about the history, but mostly about the business model and the financials of this business. And I do want to say, if you're watching this, I'm definitely on the road right now. So I um, apologize. I don't have my regular microphone or any of my regular equipment, but I did want to uh, do a little bit of a recording and get an episode in for you. And so, yeah, just bear with me. But today we're going to be talking about Macy's. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about where Macy's comes from and then what they do. This business originated all the way back in the 1800s. It was started by a man named Rowland Hussey Macy in the 1850s. So very old business. He actually was from Massachusetts and he started a bunch of dry goods, kind of retail stores in the Massachusetts area, but they all failed on him. So he decided he might have better luck if he moved to New York City. And so he moved to New York and started uh, Macy's department store that ended up becoming more successful. And so that was became one of America's first really big major department stores. Now, there were many, many department stores in the country around this time. Uh, but Macy's started to kind of uh, rise to the top. They had certain innovations that made them special uh, over the years. They started having a Santa Claus in the store for kids during Christmas time. They had illuminated displays that were attractive to customers who were walking by. So they have a couple of these retail innovations that made them stand out in their early years. But they actually stayed in the New York City area for quite a long time. They did not expand outside of the state for a while, actually until the 1900s, which is when they started branching out into other areas of the country. Now, the history of the department store industry in America is very nuanced and complex. There's a lot that happened over the span of about the last 150 years in the industry. Uh, too much to really get into here, but with regards to Macy's, just know that they acquired a lot of smaller department stores over the years. And then there was a big takeover in the 1990s. There was a store called Federated, and they basically did a leverage buyout of Macy's. And there was basically a complex transaction that ended up with Macy's having hundreds and hundreds of stores um, and all these regional stores that had been bought out over time got converted to the Macy's name. So that's how Macy's started really expanding, not only through organic expansion, but through acquisitions and through takeovers. And really any major business that's consumer facing in America that's been around for 100 plus years usually has its fair share of a ton of acquisitions and lots of things happening. And that was definitely true in Macy's case. Now, another thing that changed Macy's business over the years was they actually used to only accept cash. So they only accepted cash from customers for about 100 years into its history. They did not accept credit cards or any sort of credit until around 1950. And that was kind of a signal in the shift of the behavior of the American consumer to now using credit to buy things, which accelerated retail sales and Macy's benefited from this. Okay, I wanna take you now to Macy's financials and their business model. So right now I have pulled up the fourth quarter and full year earnings report from the company for 2022. And, you know, I was just talking about acquisitions. They have a bunch of brands under the umbrella, um, but Macy's of course is the flagship brand, but they also have Bloomingdale's and uh, Blue Mercury, which is kind of like a makeup uh, and spa concept which was new to me researching this business. I didn't know about that. So they have these couple of brands and effectively their business model is very similar to what it has been um, over the years. They essentially have retail. That's what they do. They sell clothes, home furnishings. There's a Macy's home division. There is the makeup brand, like I mentioned. So they pretty much sell uh, apparel. That's their main business model. And I was in a Macy's just yesterday, and it is kind of amazing to me when I stood there and just looked around how many different items are sold. I mean, the amount of inventory that 
a company like Macy's has to maintain is a lot. <laughs> so that's something that I thought was interesting. Um, and they're one of the last few remaining major department stores that have managed to succeed or at least you know, maintain their relevance over time. Uh, one thing I want to point out here, so there's a lot of like history. So management likes to like kind of brag about how they've changed the business over time. I, like here's a timeline over the last three years of the things that have happened with Macy's. Um, I don't really see a lot of value in this because a lot of a lot of things happen, you know, with uh, with company management, et cetera. But one thing I do want to point out that I did think was interesting. So some of the more recent things, Toys R Us has now been open in all of Macy's stores. Now, if you were a kid in the 90s like me, you remember Toys R Us. This was a huge toy store that used to have these huge superstores, um, but they they basically failed over time, um, I think because of e-commerce and, and other things. But it's interesting that the brand is coming back. So Macy's is doing more partnerships with other brands like Toys R Us to try to entice more customers to come in. And then they also have these other types of concepts like this Macy's Marketplace. So one thing I noticed in Macy's when I was standing there yesterday was they have kind of this discounts little area of the store where they have these designer brands, but it's kind of like an outlet store concept basically, but it's within the Macy store. So they're trying new, new things to try to entice customers to come back and to spend more money with them. So that's just a quick snapshot of the business today and like some of the recent things that have been going on with it. But what I really want to dig into you, you, with you now is the financial statements. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the most recent 10K, which shows the full fiscal year data for 2022 for Macy's. Okay, so what's been going on with Macy's financials? Right now, you'll see in front of me the Macy's Consolidated Statements of Operations, so the financial statements for the business over the last couple of years. And of course, first thing that I notice here is the sales, very top line of the income statement. 2020, they had $17 billion in sales. And this was definitely affected by COVID, <laughs> as were so many businesses, but especially the department store business. I mean, you literally couldn't go outside um, over a certain period of time. So yeah, sales suffered there, um, but they bounced back. So that's good news. 2021, we see $24 billion in sales. So a big jump up of about $7 billion. But here's what worries me. 2022, sales of $24 billion. Sales were literally flat from 2021 to 2022, even in the wake of reopenings, even in the wake of so many businesses recovering. Uh, Macy's clearly recovered, but I'm worried that they're not growing anymore. But that's not the end of the story. Let's keep looking further. You can see that's the vast majority of their sales. They also make a tiny bit of amount of money from credit card revenues. You see that $860 million in credit card revenues in 2022. So not really a huge part of their business, but it is what it is. Now, the cost of sales, remember, this is telling us how much money it takes to actually uh, sell those mer that merchandise. Uh, so they have a ton of cost of sales related to department stores because think about the cost associated with selling a dress or a T-shirt. You have to go to the manufacturer, you have to pay the manufacturer, you got to ship it to your store, you got to organize it, label it, tag it. There's a lot of cost involved in labor in order to get that physically there in front of the customer. So this is the type of business model that's going to have a little bit lower gross margins and lower net margins just because of the infrastructure involved. So that's why you see cost of goods or, or sorry, cost of sales relatively high. And then let's look at the selling general and administrative expenses, uh, which are you know are referred to as SGNA. Those are also relatively high, and they keep going up. So <laughs> here's the thing: so cost of sales and selling general and administrative expenses, they both go up from 2021 to 2022. Speaking specifically about SGNA, we went from about 8 billion to 8.3 billion. And for cost of sales, we went from 14.9 billion to 15.3 billion. So just creeping up there, not, not a huge change. But what does this tell us? This tells us that the business 
is getting more expensive to run over time, but the sales, the revenue that's driving the profitability of this business is not really changing. And so that means margins are going to decrease. When you have expenses go up and your revenue is flat, that's going to squeeze your margins there. So that's one thing I want to point out. And then let's go ahead and skip now to the bottom line of the net income of this business. Um, as many businesses did, they had a loss during 2020, COVID. Okay, we can kind of skip by that. That's kind of a, a unusual circumstance, but fortunately the business was able to remain solvent. 2021, 2022, they went from 1.4 billion in net income to 1.1 billion. So remember I was just talking about margins. So revenue was flat, expenses went up, their profit fell. Basically that's what happened. And so their earnings per share also ended up falling. And again, this is just like a one to two year snapshot, but it's the most recent data available. And it kind of worries me in a world that is post COVID uh, and basis is not able to increase their sales or their profits. All right, looking quickly now at the balance sheet, I just want to point out here that the business is losing cash. I mean, so this cash balance is, is really concerning to me. They had 1.7 billion a year ago, and now they have just 860 million. So about half the level of cash that they used to have. Total current assets in general, I mean, their inventory is, that's the main assets of this business, their inventory, because they have so many uh, clothes, merchandise, apparel, that's been falling as well. And then if we go down to the liabilities, long-term debt, I always like to look at the debt, that's been decreasing slightly, but I mean, they still have $3 billion in debt. Not to mention, look at this line item right below, long-term lease liabilities. So Macy's doesn't actually own a lot of the properties that it operates out of. They have these long-term leases with landlords, and they're the tenants. So they sign these long-term agreements and agree to pay them, and that is effectively capitalize as a liability on the balance sheet. So that's why we're seeing that here, $3 billion in long-term lease liability. So they got a lot of liabilities here. And then going very quickly to the cash flow statement, net cash from operating activities, not looking too great. It kind of mirrors the income statement that we were just looking at. Um, investing activities, they're spending more money basically. Um, software, equipment, those kinds of things. And then they're paying off some of their debt, but not at a very fast rate. We can see the debt repaid versus the debt issued. Um, you know, they're basically going into debt little by little. They're paying some dividends. They're buying back some stock, kind of like very typical corporate things. Nothing really crazy is jumping out at me here. But um, in general, that's the cash flow statement and balance sheet. Okay, now that we looked at the financial statements, let's talk just for a minute or two about valuation. So I want to point out Macy's stock price right now. You can see over the past five years, Macy's stock has really struggled. I mean, they're down over 40% over the past five years. And so it's just really struggling company. Market capitalization has fallen below $5 billion. But look at this, P-E ratio 4.14. That is insanely cheap if we look at traditional P-E metrics. Like that's super cheap. You wouldn't expect even a retailer to be that cheap. But that just means that the market is expecting no growth right now. If Macy's was able to even bring back modest growth, let's say in the mid single digits or high single digits, then the valuation would improve dramatically just right from there. And we can also see the valuation reflected in the dividend yield. Dividend yield for Macy's stock right now is just 3.8%, which I think is actually pretty high for a stock like this. So if you're looking for dividends, it could be a contender. If you're looking for kind of a deeper value play, this might be a contender just because like Macy's is still around. So like people thought it would disappear years ago. They didn't disappear during the pandemic. They managed to, to survive and consolidate their business a little bit. Um, but I think the main question here is, can they grow? If Macy's can return to some level of growth, then I think there is opportunity to be had here because the stock is priced so pessimistically right now. Um, I'm a little bit hesitant just because I don't really have a lot of belief 
that they will be able to turn things around. Um, Macy's are mainly concentrated in malls. Malls in general, as a segment, have been struggling with traffic ever since, even before the pandemic began, as e-commerce has taken a bigger and bigger cut of people's wallet share and overall sales for goods. So I think that Macy's still has a lot of work to do. I don't know. I, I've looked for signs of life here and there when researching this company. I haven't really seen anything really sticking out, but I think that Macy's could be a really good value play if you believe there is some growth catalyst. But as for me, I don't see the growth catalyst, so I'm not buying the stock. But that's just a quick overview of Macy's, a little bit of the history, the business model, and the financials. And again, I'm on the road right now, but I really want to get an episode out to you today. So thank you so much for watching or listening. If you want to reach out to me, email me at alex at stockstoriespodcast.com. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, bye.